Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 375. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening to the blogcast. I was just listening to a podcast called Podcast Graveyard, where they like, I guess, mourn or debrief podcasts that have finished. In other words, they've been canceled or just ended or who knows. Uh, But the episode I listened to, they were talking about how many episodes this guy had done. He was like, you've done 88 shows. That's so much content. And I was like, 88? Come on. (laughs) Here I am at 375. So, um, I mean, I'm glad no one's making a podcast about this show being over. Uh, But it was pretty funny to me. Like, really? Only 88? That's nothing. I mean, also, it sounds like this guy had, like, editors and multiple people involved, and it took him hours and hours and hours. I think he was also having, like, conversations and guests and all of that. So that that does all take a bit more time than this. Maybe. I don't know, because I'm, I'm not tracking my time. Like, that's, like, specifically for this, right? Like, there's the time of writing the piece, there's the time of learning the song, there's the time of just this recording. Uh, It's maybe not, it's more time consuming than it seems, is what I'm realizing. Anyway, thank you. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today's blog is about a movie I saw, an Austrian movie called Corsage. Um, If you haven't seen it, I will be saying uh, a spoiler um i'm also you'll hear that i'm not recommending this movie so it might be okay to hear the spoiler and decide if you feel like you want to participate <laughs> anyway there there i don't do this i'm going to announce the spoiler before the spoiler happens so if you want to listen and then miss the spoiler just like fast forward like a few minutes and just one other heads up before I read this one to you uh, this post is pretty connected to a previous post previous blog previous podcast uh, about the empress which is about the same historical figure Um, I believe also made in Austria but could be made in Germany not 100% on that anyway I wrote a whole thing about the empress maybe last year few months ago, some sometime in the past. Um, and this post is kind of talking to that post also. So if you want to be like, I don't know, a completist, maybe go back and listen to The Empress first, and then you can listen to this one. I don't think you need to listen to that post. Or read up about the history of uh, The Empress uh, Elizabeth, even, I think I think it's a, I think it's a, it embedded. The point is here regardless. But if you felt like you wanted to know what I'm talking about also in the past, then uh, look for for that one. I believe it is called The Empress Shoes, The Empress's Shoes. So, check that out if you would like to listen to that first or after. You know, there's no particular order, I don't think. Anyway, Uh, Let me read this one to you. It is called More Empress Elizabeth Rage Content, or Yes, I Watched Corsage. After reading a bit about the history of Empress Elizabeth of Austria, because of questions that came up after watching The Empress, I learned of another Empress Elizabeth, also known as Sissy, project in the pipeline. The film, Corsage, was reported to look at the darker side of the Empress, dealing with her fat phobia, her tight lacing, and obsession with her extremely long hair. After the overly romantic fantasy version of this woman in The Empress, I was ready for a thornier sissy. I thought this new film might be a more historically accurate version of events because of the inclusion of these less attractive aspects of her personality. But as I watched it, I didn't need to read more history to notice it was just as made up as the Empress, if not more. 
The thing about the Empress was it was clear to me why they made up the fictions that they did. A love story between relative equals is a lot more attractive than the Emperor marrying a young teenage girl. It is a beautiful fantasy to imagine an empress wanting to help the poor so much she would give a factory urchin her shoes. I actually understand these impulses, even though they irked me. With Corsage, I am struggling to understand why they bent history in this particular direction. Is there a word that means the opposite of romanticize? Like, darkify? depressify, simplify to a sadder story. And it's not that this movie was particularly depressing. It's more like they tried to make legible some illegible behaviors, which then turned this woman's tragic end to an entirely different, actually less tragic, maybe, and definitely less complex end. But that's not why I'm mad at it. Here are some facts I learned after my first encounter with this empress. Number one, she was assassinated at the age of 60 while traveling. Number two, she endured a really awful family tragedy in her 50s when her son killed his mistress and himself. Number three, she studied Greek during the two hours it took to wash her hair. In addition to her native German, she was also fluent in French and English. Number four, she studied philosophy and wrote poetry. Number five, She facilitated the uniting of Austria and Hungary, which indicates some political power and interest. Only one of these things appears in Corsage. She speaks French and English. Corsage is the story of Elizabeth turning 40 and having a hard time with aging. We watch her restrict her food, tight-lace her corset, and throw herself out a window. Two of these things are things she actually did the food restrictions and the tight lacing. This movie, Elizabeth, is clearly a woman going through it. Her interest in the mental health wings of the hospital, the real sissy did have an interest in mental health care, is clearly a mirror for her own experience of mental distress. In Corsage, we are watching a woman self-destruct. I think we are meant to feel that this woman's constraints and boredom ultimately send her over the edge. But the real Elizabeth's life was clearly much fuller than this fictional version. The real Elizabeth was engaged with ideas, with travel, with learning. Yes, she was worried about her hair and her waistline. But her inclination to learn Greek while having her hair washed suggests to me a woman who has not given up on life, but who wants to make the most of every minute. She made an enormous difference in the alliance of Austria and Hungary. She was not a helpless trophy wife for the emperor. The Empress TV show reduced Sissy to a romantic, modern, manic pixie dream girl. The Corsage movie reduced Sissy to a dysfunctional Cosmo girl. It literally had her entourage drinking what looked like Cosmopolitans on a ship. And then there's the main thing that made me mad at it. This is going to be the spoiler, so skip ahead to the last paragraph if you're planning on watching Corsage and want to be surprised. And yes, I know I already told you about her throwing herself out a window, but it's not a big deal in the story, actually, so that's not the big spoiler. Spoilers follow. After cutting off her beloved hair, eating forbidden cake, and becoming a heroin addict at her doctor's insistence, Elizabeth formulates a plan to kill herself and have her companion impersonate her. The film ends with her diving off the prow of a ship, presumably to her death. The moral of the story appears to be when you hit 40 and can no longer count on your appearance to win you things, you should just throw yourself into the sea. What the... This historical figure had 20 more years to live and thrive than this film gave her. The historical sissy apparently traveled around Europe, often accompanied by Greek men in their 20s. The actual sissy's life did not end at 40. I'm very unclear about why this fictional version of her had to. Turning 40 is not a tragedy. 
It wasn't for the historical empress, either. Her actual tragedies mostly came later and were a lot worse than refusing to eat cake. I don't know why this movie insists on killing off a woman who had another 20 full years to live and enjoy her life. The filmmaker is now 45, so one presumes she started making this film when she was on the precipice of 40, and maybe she thought, oh, this sucks. Maybe I should just throw myself into the sea after a lifetime of worrying about my hair and my calories. And I can sympathize with the pain of realizing that worrying about one's appearance your whole life will come to naught. But I'm not sure why she had to bring Empress Elizabeth into it. I mean, if I'm going to watch a fictionalized empress, I'd rather watch one decide to cut her hair, start eating cake, and then go ahead and enjoy her 40s and 50s hanging around beautiful young Greek traveling companions around the world. And she doesn't even need to do the fiction of cutting her hair and starting to eat cake. I think we need stories of powerful women in their 40s and 50s doing what they want. Would I like for her to have cake? Of course. But I'd rather watch her have her real weirdo eating disorder in 20 more years of her interesting life. Having her need to end her life as soon as she experiences a hint of aging is not only ageist, but also dangerously nihilistic. I mean, I suppose the filmmaker is Austrian. Maybe there's some cultural nihilism that is hard to steer clear of, but I find it a disturbing impulse to make historic-ish art more nihilistic than life. I think they think they're somehow empowering Sissy by having her be in charge of her own death instead of getting murdered 20 years later. After all, she gets cake this way. But the message I got from this story was better to be dead than a middle-aged woman. Oh, fuck that. I'm going to need more stories about middle-aged and older women doing cool things. The Green Glove Gang was a good start and dead to me scratched an itch, but I'm going to need more. How about a look at the last 20 years of Sissy's life? Instead of showing us her youth or the end of her youth, how about a project where we see her bring Austria and Hungary together or to hell? The drama of dealing with the murder-suicide of her son or her assassination by an Italian anarchist. The woman had an extraordinary life. I'm not sure why we're reducing her to a romance or an eating disorder. History itself is very interesting and dramatic. I don't know why we have to simplify it and change it in such weird ways for our TV and movies. Particularly in ways that make me mad. Man, now I want cake. My goodness. So one side note on this is I have been trying to learn a little Greek since this summer, since I went to Crete, and I, I've been continuing just because it's interesting. And it is a hard language. It is not easy. So there's something about it's like not another romance or Germanic language she's trying to learn while she washes her hair for two hours. It's Greek. It is Greek. I mean, it comes in handy later, it sounds like. <laughs> she was highly motivated to learn Greek, but it it is not an easy language. I will just reiterate. So I am more impressed that she tried to do it while she was washing her hair. I'm not sure I could multitask and do Greek, like Greek and hair washing at the same time. I guess she wasn't washing her hair. She had people for that. Anyway, uh, that's, you know, who knows? They may make some more content about this lady, and I will write about it again, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. So far, I don't I haven't heard of anything, but uh, she is a very popular historical uh, figure. So who knows? Could be. Anyway, uh, what song am I going to play for you? Well, I looked for songs about cake. <laughs> And I, I mean, I didn't really find anything good. And then uh, I thought, oh, you know, like, ultimately, this is mostly enraging because of the ageism. So maybe a song about aging. And um, so I decided to go with Landslide, which is a song I loved in my teenage years and feel less interested in now, which is kind of funny. But I think at the time I was... I, 
I don't know. I was into it. Now I now I'm like, what? This song doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what is this song really about? And it's moving somehow, but I, I don't get, really get it. But I, it was it was good to sort of tap into my teenage self to try and do it justice. So I'm going to play you Landslide in just a moment. But meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you like this podcast, please tell someone about it. Like, review, subscribe. You can do that in your podcast app, but there's also a link uh, called Rate My Podcast, which is linked. you can link to in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support this podcast, that would be amazing. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, you guys, like a lot, and so many of them are full of ads, like so many ads. And you're like, wow, are you guys really raking it in? <laughs> I don't make a cent. <laughs> this is, wow. Okay. So if you like an ad-free experience, you can help uh, contribute. And you can do that on patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's Kofi, there's PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. Uh, there are so many heroic people who who help this happen. Um, so it's not quite true that I don't make a cent. I make a cent through the kind contributions of people like you. Not a lot of cents, but some. So thank you. Those links, again, in the show notes. And uh, there's also Substack, should you prefer Substack. And uh, I think those are the ones if you have one that you prefer, like a donation platform or whatever, please let me know. I will join it, and then you can be the first to kick off that place, wherever that place may be. So, thank you. And mostly thank you for listening. So, this song, a much-beloved Fleetwood Mac tune, uh, and features the line of... Um, can I handle the seasons of my life? And in this movie, Sissy could not handle the seasons of her life. And uh, uh, I feel we, we need some more hope than that, is my sense. So um, I'm on guitar here, a couple of Emily's, and uh, enjoy. took my love and I took it down I climbed a mountain and I turned around And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills Till a landslide brought me down Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my changing ocean tides can I handle the seasons of my life mm-hmm. well I've been afraid of changing cause I built my But time makes you bolder, even children get older, and I'm getting older too. Well, I've been afraid of changing, cause I Turn around. He 
If you see my reflection in the snow-covered hills, a landslide will bring you down. And if you see my reflection in the snow-covered hills, well, a landslide will bring you down. A landslide. Bring you